Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to another update. Welcome back on this Thursday night. It is the Earthmaster out here. March 7th, 2024. We got Friday coming around right tomorrow again. About 11.47 p.m. here. So almost, uh, Calif oh, well, it's in California time. Almost Friday. A lot of Friday uh, already for a lot of you guys. All right, 4.8, latest earthquake here into the South America region where we've been seeing a decent amount of earthquake activity. We'll check that out here in just a little bit. Uh, I want to cover first the uh, activity there across the Iceland region where they're stating that there's an increased likelihood of volcanic eruption. We've been hearing it here for about 10 days or so, maybe even a little bit longer. Um, so the question is, when's it going to hit? Well, I think uh, once we see elevated earthquake activity here across the Atlantic and in general across Iceland, then we know uh, that it's just a matter of time. But I'm not seeing that yet. There is still uh, obviously some swelling going on underneath the Savart Singhi area in terms of magma accumulation. The latest statement here, let me blow this up so you guys can see, uh, states that the uh, increased likelihood of a volcanic eruption um, zones two and three have been merged into one zone. Here is their likely sequence of events over the next several days, but you know, it's, it's hard to say the volume of magma beneath the Svart Singhi area continues to increase, which could result in a new dike intrusion and possibly an eruption. Uh, an eruption could occur with very short notice, possibly less than 30 minutes. A notice that they're mentioning right here is earthquake activity. We'll see hundreds of earthquakes in a small amount of of time in a certain area and right there we know where that's going to take place as far as the eruptive activity goes. The most likely eruption site is between the Astora Stagafell and the Hagafell region. Um, so yeah, obviously inflation c continues and model calculations based on the GNSS data from March 3rd to March 6th indicate that approximately 1.2 million cubic meters of magma has been injected into the magma chamber during these days. So we're looking at a total now of 10 million cubic meters. Um, yeah, so definitely uh, looks like things could be uh, getting close to, um, you know, happening here. We'll have to watch it and um, see how it takes place. But again, I'm not seeing a lot of elevated activity out here. This is the last 12 hours. Only 20 earthquakes, and they're really not anywhere near uh, the Grindavik area and the Savart Singhi area. So... Uh, we'll continue to watch that. Not a whole lot going on out here in the Atlantic Ocean either. Once we start seeing elevated activity out here, it seems like things really uh, rapidly increase, right? It makes sense, right? Divergent zone activity, spreading seafloor center. That would that would only allow further uh, accumulation of magma in a short amount of time. So that's uh, it, it's hard to say. We'll, we'll watch it. All right, there's the activity down in South America region. Uh, 4.8 coming in. Pretty decent amount of earthquake activity out here in the last 24 hours up and down the Perugili Trench. Uh, so that's an area to watch here pretty closely with this movement. Uh, I said to watch for this, right? Following this divergent zone activity out here between the uh, Antarctica Plate boundary and the Nazca Plate, this region, um, which is right about here, right? When we get uh, the divergent zone activity out here, it seems like it wants to put pressure out here against the uh, Peru Chile Trench and we've noticed that today with the elevated activity and uh, of course this 4.8 that's coming in right now so we'll continue to watch that region. Uh, Puerto Rico area up here a handful of earthquakes in the normal typical zone of swarming but aside from that really no major activity across the Puerto Rico Trench or the subduction zone area there to the east for now. Uh, Middle America Trench of course Costa Rica has seen this 5.7 that was just after midnight my time last night well yeah uh, getting close to dropping off the map here. We did see a little activity further up north, 28 kilometers for this earthquake above that 5.7. So uh, that's, you know, obviously another area to watch as well. It's uh, It's been kind of active there across the Middle America Trench here recently. Into the California area. See what we got for earthquake activity here today. As um, far as any major zones to watch, uh, Really not seeing any major seismic swarms going on. Uh, let's see what we got for the 2.5. 2.5 is absent of earthquake activity. So uh, obviously elevate, uh, not elevated, but uh, minimal microquake activity. Getting a little swarming. Well, a couple earthquakes. That's not really a swarm, right? On the uh, creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault, which is very normal. A handful of smaller quakes here across the Long Valley Supervolcano. 
And, uh, you know, just very small microquakes, not really noticing any swarming going on there across that area. Uh, and this swarm up here across the Clear Lake volcanic field, typical, always happening. Um, there's hydrothermal plants there in that region. All right, Mount St. Helens, what do we got here? Adding a few more earthquakes here on the map uh, from this morning. Got about four earthquakes, but um, I want to I double check that and see what's going on there across the Mount St. Helens area. Stand by for a second. Wasn't going to check it because I thought it was uh, calming down, but it looks like there's a few more earthquakes showing up here on the map uh, from the USGS. So in that case, I got to keep an eye on it and, and see for myself. There's some of those earthquakes on the southern flank here, it looks like, of the volcano in Washington. A seismograph station here will tell us what's going on. So, um, when were those earthquakes? Those earthquakes were about, um, let me check here. They were early in the morning. Um, 3 6. Stand by for a second here. Yeah, early in the morning, about 10 o'clock or so local time. So. 10 o'clock local time so any one of these could be um, it could be maybe some of these earthquakes but if you look at it how come they're not including all the other earthquakes that are showing up here on the graph uh you know if, if we were, were to say that uh that um these earthquakes are right here in question the smaller ones you know they're they're below a point one but what about all these other ones are these a bunch of point ones out here um, either way, definitely looks like some type of swarming going on up here across the Mount St. Helens area. Going to have to look in the daytime there at the uh, webcam. I think they still have it up, a temporary webcam looking at the volcano. Uh, so a lot of times ice will show up here, but I'm not 100% certain that all of these are ice. Looks like, you know, like ice quakes. These are uh, definitely look like earthquakes up there. Um, and some of those will show up uh, away from the northern or away from the center of the volcano but uh not quite as active here right so maybe picking up something directly uh this seismograph station picking up something more local to this area haven't really seen any major elevated activity aside from carbon dioxide i'm not for sure what this was um a really sharp peak there for a little bit and then it went down uh far as any other volcanic gases out here hydrogen hydrogen sulfide fairly low sulfur dioxide as well I've really not seen any elevated uh, uh, plots coming in there to that area. But uh, we'll continue to watch it and report back on uh, anything that takes place. A little earthquake there across the Mount Rainier area. Very small quake. And uh, looks like another earthquake up here in the Olympic Mountains range uh, just west of Seattle. 2.6, 40 kilometers deep. That is associated with the Hick uh, no, I was going to say the Hikarangi. But how'd the Hikarangi get over here? The Cascadia subduction zone. <laughs> There's a lot of subduction zones. One of these days, one of these videos, we'll cover just strictly subduction zones and take a look at history and whatnot. That actually sounds like a really cool video to make. Uh, so let's see what we got for the trimmer activity here along the Cascadia tonight. Uh, wow, okay. About 27 epicenters. Not a big deal. These are not earthquakes. This is basically trimmer, uh, slow vibrational frequencies being uh, observed by sensitive equipment as the two plates slide past each other slowly in a slow slip type event. Uh, and that's uh, mainly, looks like it's uh, just underneath the Oregon area. Not noticing anything up here. But uh, it, it continues the trend of quietness compared to years past where we've seen regular intervals of trimmer occurring on large you know pretty much large events uh, but we haven't really seen anything like that since uh, about october of 2022 when we had you know a few hundred there uh, i think close to a thousand on one day and it, it was like that for the years past it seemed like it'd come and go uh, every few months or so but now something's going on here we're getting some quiet conditions so uh guess we'll see where this uh, leads uh yellowstone national park not going not too much going on up there a little bit of activity in the idaho region now let's double check yellowstone let's see if we got any swarming going on looks like some wind events earlier uh that's what these are gonna be this here looks like some type of uh, uh let's see here did that even show up on this seismograph station i'm talking about this reading right here 
Looks like it may have showed up here closely. I know it's off. That's definitely a different, uh, if you look at the time zones, they don't, or time frames, it doesn't really match up. Um, a little bit though, see that little one? So a little uncertain on what that is. Could be some earthquakes over there in Idaho showing up uh, on some more of these uh, sensitive stations. But aside from that, there's really not a whole lot of earthquake activity taking place here uh, in the Yellowstone area for now. Um, Kansas, well, Oklahoma, Kansas border, 2.3 outside of Medford area. And Texas still seeing some movement out here. A look at the global model here. Uh, well, Alaska looks pretty active up here. That's a lot of earthquakes ramping up. Uh, not so much for the 2.5, but uh, we do have quite a few microquakes stretching up here. Really not swarming anywhere. It's just more of a broader area stretching up into the uh, Denali area. So watch the subduction zones here across the Aleutian Trench. I uh, did see some further deep activity here across the Tonga Trench. Kermit, actually, probably in the Kermadec Trench here. We're split. Uh, 487 kilometers for that 4.5. I don't think we've seen any further movement across New Zealand. Although we did see, uh, it looks like a handful of smaller quakes on along the Kermadec Trench here. Looks like a 3-pointer and a 3.9. Um, so still kind of quiet out here right across the Solomon Islands in the uh, Vanuatu area really hasn't uh, seen much activity here recently over here across Japan uh, most of these older quakes from this morning although we did see another 4.8 here in the uh, it was kind of my watch zone it's been in my watch zone for quite a while the Kuro Kamachaka Trench Kuro Islands area 4.8 we've been seeing a uh, you know a lot of deeper earthquake activity here recently so uh, I'm sure this area is quite strained. Uh, one earthquake here outside of the uh, Andaman Sea area just coming in pretty deep. Within the last uh, 20 minutes or so, 4.4, 161 kilometers deep there on that uh, earthquake. It almost looks like things are taking a pause here across the western Pacific uh, areas, waiting for some further momentum here across this plate boundary, the Java Trench area. Uh, so we'll watch that, see if we see if we don't get any uh, some larger events there taking place overnight. Did have a five pointer out there south of the Philippines in that little cluster area. Uh, deeper activity up here once again. Got a 4.1 um, uh, into the Afghanistan area, eastern Afghanistan. Typical movement up here in the mountains. Well, underneath the mountains that is. Uh, aside from that, uh, Turkey area seeing some earthquake activity once again and. Uh, uh, really not a whole lot of swarming going on there, uh, at least from what I can tell around the Greece area. Uh, I know we've seen some swarming out there around the Ionian Islands area, but uh, it doesn't look like much going on right now. And again, the Atlantic Ocean is quiet. Not a whole lot going on. And I don't think we'll see any further uh, large-scale movement as far as eruptive activity up there in Iceland until we start seeing some further divergent zone activity. That's my base. I mean, I've been kind of watching the Iceland activity a lot. Been paying close attention to uh, what goes on prior uh, to each eruption. And uh, each eruption has shown us that there's been elevated activity out here uh, along the divergent zones of the uh, northern Atlantic and areas north of Iceland here. Um, but we haven't seen that recently. Yes, we're getting magma accumulation, but I don't think that's enough to... Uh, uh, trigger the eruptive activity at the surface. So once we start seeing that, and we've seen it, um, you know, prior to each eruption, then we can start saying uh, that this is happening soon. But I don't see it right now. Uh, space weather activity. See if anything else is going on out here in the space weather world. Really, not a lot. If you call a B four point two a flare, that is very, very low grade. Um, very minimal conditions. We're dipping down. Look at that. About the lowest I've seen in quite a while. Now, while there is some sunspots out here, right? Got a, a couple out here peppering the uh, sun. They were all stable in complexity in terms of their magnetic structure. So there's not a whole lot going on here. Uh, this area, I, I did have a little... Well, this is the area I picked here a couple days ago. If you, if you twisted my arm, I would say I'd pick this one. Maybe for some flaring, but uh, it looks like it wants to separate here. So we're not really seeing a whole lot of complexity anymore within that region. Unfortunately, uh, we're entering into a quiet spell. 80% uh, chance for sea flare, inflare at 20%. 
And uh, make sure I turn off the bells. Yes, I did. Uh, X flare. I don't know why X flare is ele elevated at five percent. <coughs> That's a little odd. I think uh, where they're showing beta, they're showing a uh, thirty-five ninety-nine is a beta gamma delta structure, and that's the one I was just showing you guys. Um, I this was taken on um, the first, so a couple, of, obviously a few days has passed, so I'm not quite for sure that we're going to see any type of X flare from that. Uh, I'm guessing the X flare was raised because of that thirty-five ninety-nine, but there's, I mean, I'm looking at it. I don't really see it so it's just my my own observation there uh, as far as the far side of the Sun here well 3590 right that's at uh, the culprit of the a lot of the X flares here recently right it's about mid mid uh, distance there on the far side of the Sun um, we'll see if that rotates back into view here uh, in the coming days well it'll be a little bit more than a few days but uh, Aside from that, even the far side here looks a little on the uh, absent side of any large areas to watch. So, all right, Storm Prediction Center out here did see some tornado warnings out across Texas and Oklahoma and Kansas. Had to continue overnight, looks like here uh, for tomorrow's time period. Um, we got uh, a shift in the weather and the severe potential out here across portions of the south. That's a broad area of slight uh, risk category, but there's also a, a large area of a 5% tornado risk here across areas of Montgomery, Alabama, Jackson, Mississippi area. Uh, so if you're out here tomorrow anywhere within this zone, even the 2% zone, heads up, keep your weather radio nearby and uh, you know have a plan, have an action plan there for the severe weather potential out there. That's a pretty large area. Uh, also some wind and some hail events as well. Uh, and then the uh, following day on Saturday, that severe weather shifts over here across the southeast, bringing with it that uh, large 5% zone of tornado probability. So got a couple days of some severe weather to deal with there across the south and the southeast. Uh, across the west coast, there's not a whole lot going on. Um, we do have a little rain. Well... Well, it looks like uh, the first rainmaker there on Sunday, Saturday into Sunday, is not going to be all that big of a deal. Mainly going to be hitting Oregon and Washington. It's not until Sunday night, Monday here, we start seeing some more rain and snow at the higher elevations there. And maybe another little storm behind that. But after that, it seems like things are going to dry up and warm up out here across California. Um, you know, maybe possibly there uh, towards the end of March, things look like they may change a little bit. I see uh, some signs of some moisture off there off the West Coast, but uh, that's a ways out. Either way, some much colder air coming in. Look at that, uh, these cold lines here dipping down into the uh, Great Plains states here. Going to bring a lot of colder air coming in, so I guess March can be uh, quite cold out there, right? Uh, either way, spring is uh, getting close. It's upon us here, technically. Um, we got time change coming up this weekend again. Got to spring forward. Yay. All right. Uh, what else we got here, folks? Anything else going on here? I think that is about it. As far as the uh, seismograph stations go here, Yellowstone... That's Lake Yellowstone. A little small, very small, spiky earthquake activity there. Uh, but aside from that, not a whole lot going on. Looks like we lost the Hawaii Hot Cave Station, unfortunately. Um, the Hawaii area is really not uh, really not seeing too much earthquake activity out there. Just fairly minimal. Um, just a temporary pause for now. All right, folks, have yourself a good night. We'll catch you guys back out here for Friday. Well, technically, yeah, it is Friday, right? Early Friday morning right now, even my time. Have a good night. See you guys back here in the morning sometime. Peace out.